What's going on guys? Sean Gutierrez back with another video. Guys, I know these videos are crazy. Just, just listen to me talk, but I appreciate all you guys watching these. I'm trying to bring you guys some content and some knowledge that I have uh, through this tough time while we can't cut hair. So guys, today I'm going to teach you my uh, tips on opening your own barbershop. Of course, I have my own shop I've had for almost four years. I'm going to give you guys my tips. Hope you guys enjoy it and learn something from this, but let's get into it. All right, guys, so today I'm gonna to teach you guys my top five tips on how to open your own barbershop. And uh, you know, guys, it's it's not that difficult of a task. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do to help you out. Uh, so I wanna drop you those things. And uh, I know a lot of people dream to open their own barbershop. And so hopefully I can give you guys some tips that can help you guys get there. So guys, my number one tip for opening your own shop is to know your why. It's very important that you know why you wanna do this, uh, that you have a good reason for why, because when the times get tough, uh, and when you get in, you know, right now is a tough time, guys. It's not a fun time to own a barbershop. All the bills are due. No one's working. Uh, so it makes it tough. And, and in this time, it's my responsibility to go find these loans and find these things that can help us stay uh, operating when we get back. So anyways, guys, you got to know your why. Why do you want to open your own barbershop? For me, my why, I was in a shop that was great for me to start working at. Uh, it was a walk-in shop, five chairs, uh, one of the busier shops in town. But for me, as I grew, uh, it was something that I was going to outgrow. Uh, and I had a lot of goals. I had a lot of ideas on what I wanted a shop to look like uh, and where I wanted my career to go. Um, of course, I wanted to be able to charge more. I got real busy. I needed to do appointments. Uh, kind of the techniques and the style that I cut was, was stuff that they weren't doing at that shop. So I wasn't surrounded by anybody that was going to help me grow. Um, so those, the, all those reasons kind of went into me wanting to open my own shop. And then as I've mentioned before, guys, I had three friends that were in barber school that were going to be out of school soon uh, and they needed a shop to work in. So the shop I was at was full. There was a few other uh, opportunities in town. Of course, if I left there, uh, there, there would have been a chair there. So, um, but, but not very many opportunities for my guys. So that's really what pushed me after knowing that I wanted to grow, I wanted to charge more, I wanted to go to appointments so I could schedule better. I knew those things were something that I wanted. Uh, and then I had friends who needed a job and needed a chair uh, that had nowhere to go. So it just kind of worked out. I knew that if I opened a shop that I had three guys coming in uh, and that was gonna give them an opportunity. And also guys, my goal for opening this shop was to open a shop that those guys could, could thrive in. Uh, I never wanted them to be held back by the same thing, by price, by uh, the way the appointments or walk-ins were set up. I want them to be able to thrive, uh, be as busy as they want, cut how they want, and really take their career as far as they want. So that was my number one reason, um, was to give myself and my guys a place where they could grow uh, and take this as far as they wanted. Um, and that's my why, guys. It's, uh, it's, it's freedom for me, freedom for my guys. Um, and you know, like I said, through these tough times, I, it's my responsibility to keep this going uh, so that when we get back, we'll have a place to work. Uh, and you know, that's why I signed up. I, I got eight other barbers this, that, that live off of this shop. Uh, and so I owe it to these guys to keep it together. Uh, and this is my livelihood, guys, I'll be honest. I've really been struggling lately, not cutting hair, not seeing my team, not seeing my clients. Um, this has turned into everything that I do. So uh, it's my YouTube, it's, you know, it's my side hustle. It's my, you know, it's all these different, all this main part of my life that, that's missing right now. So it's been tough, but uh, you know, I signed up to be in charge. Uh, I'm going to tough it out and figure it out through all these tough times and we're going to get back together. So, but number one, guys, you got to know your why. You got to make sure that that's a good reason. I definitely don't recommend opening the shop just for the money uh, where you can make some money. And we'll talk into that later. But uh, if you're doing this just to make money, you know, it's not going to be a fun ride for you. Um, the, the actual shop itself, and we'll go into it more, but it's not as much of a money maker as people may think. So uh, we're going to get into that next. So I'll roll right into my next point, guys. And number two on opening your own shop, money, bills, employees. Uh, you need to have all those numbers figured out. Okay, so as you go into opening your own shop, make sure you have the numbers on what the rent's going to cost, what the utilities are going to cost, um, what all of your expenses are for the shop, what the build out's going to cost, where are you getting that money from? Uh, luckily for me, guys, I had a close friend. He's retired and, and the company he worked for put a lot of money into stock for him and he matched that. Uh, and over the years, his stock has rose. And uh, so he's sitting pretty nice and he's uh, fortunate enough for me. He's a good friend of mine and he was uh, willing to 
helped me open the shop when he heard that I was wanting to. So for me, my build out money came from a personal friend. Uh, you guys know you can go to the bank and get small business loans. Uh, a lot of a lot of clients, maybe you may have some clients that are better off that would be willing to work with you. But yeah, guys, so figure out where your money's gonna come from. Uh, if you need to go to a bank, if you have a family uh, or a friend that could be an investor and let you borrow, um, figure all that out. And then on top of that, you need to figure out what's your monthly cost gonna be. Uh, so what's your rent, utilities, uh, anything else that you have in the shop that costs, uh, internet, um, anything you pick up and drop off, maybe you have somebody do your towels, uh, any services you wanna have, make sure you have those numbers totaled up. You put that in one side, say that, say that uh, we'll break it down to make it easy for you guys. So let's say the total bills for everything is a thousand bucks. We'll call it to be safe that you're gonna get four weeks out of a month for booth rent. Uh, so that means that 250 a week will pay your thousand bucks a month. Uh, so then how many chairs will it take to get you 250 a week? And now that goes into how much you wanna charge for booth rent and all of that. Now guys, I'll tell you, uh, for me, uh, booth rent was the way to go. I really don't want to complicate uh, doing commission and having to have a computer system. Either you got to have a computer system, everybody has to ring up their haircuts, have a cash register. Um, of course, that's on paper, that's more debit cards, more transactions, uh, not so much just cash and simple transactions. Uh, either, either you do the computer system or you just trust that all you guys are going to keep perfect track of how many haircuts they did and hand you a, a percentage at the end of the day. And then for me guys, to be honest, like I said, these guys were my friends coming in. I wanted to give them a spot where they could really thrive. And I feel like taking 40% uh, or 50% of what they make um, just wasn't putting them in a good position. And that was getting me to, to make more money. So um, call me dumb, whatever you guys want to say. Uh, obviously I could be making more money. So for me, it was a situation where me just not having to pay booth rent coming from the other shop. I came here, uh, the guys pay booth rent, it covers the bills and I don't have to pay. I get to keep everything I make. That was enough for me to, um, to be worth opening my own shop. And then I knew that as we grew, eventually the shop would pay me. But uh, doing commission and really taking a lot of their hard earned money didn't sound like something I would want to sign up for. Um, and again, guys, I was trying to give people a place that they could thrive. So uh, I went with booth rent. I found out how many barbers it took. Now, as we've grown, the bills have gone up. Of course, more chairs, more electricity. Uh, we have more more things in here. We got an Apple Music account. We, we got streaming that we do. Um, different stuff, uh, ADT security. You know, I can the, the list goes on um, of things that the shop calls for. Um, but those things are covered by the booth rent and then anything left over eventually will be mine. So I chose to go that route. That made me feel better uh, of giving my guys a place that they could thrive uh, as opposed to doing commission. And like I said, commission to me guys was a lot more technical uh, computer system. We're really keeping track. Um, and commission kind of makes them employees. Uh, it just changes the whole setup. So I'm not gonna tell you guys you can't do that. I will say that I don't know anything about commission uh, and what it takes to go about doing that. Uh, so for me, booth rent was easy. Everybody keeps what they make. At the end of the week, they pay me. I put it in the shop account, pay the bills. Uh, and and that's, that's simple for me. So that's what I end up choosing to go with. So, all right guys, so my number three tip is find out what makes you different. What is gonna make you different as a barbershop uh, and what's gonna set you up for success? Um, so for us, it still kind of goes into my same reasons that I opened the shop. Uh, I noticed that there was a lot of new trends in barbering um, with the way that we cut hair, the hairstyles, um, just just being more knowledgeable, having better tools, uh, better equipment, going to training and, and classes and learning and, and giving out a better product and the overall experience being better. So my why was just like why I left where I was. I wanted to bring a better experience. I wanted to bring a higher quality, um, higher cost. You know, there are people out there that want the premium things. There's also people out there that want a $12 haircut. So I will tell you guys, whatever that is, whatever your why is, whatever your reason that you're gonna do it the way you wanna do it is, there's a spot for you. So I got guys I went to barber school that work in small towns that charge 10 bucks a haircut. Uh, they do like 10 minute, $10 haircuts. I got guys that went to school with me that work here that we charge uh, triple that and spend three, four times the, the amount of time during those haircuts. So figure out what makes you different guys. What opening is there in the, in the area that you're at? What is lacking in the area that you're at? So for us, we wanted to bring much more detailed, not as rushed haircuts, something that you know you could sit for 30, 45 minutes, relax, get a good experience. 
uh, with the best haircut you could get in town. Uh, we did cost a little more, but like I said, there are people that like to buy premium uh, and they, they understand that they're getting their money's worth when they spend more. So for me, uh, the difference was that we were gonna be the top of the line, uh, the first barbershop around to start bringing these new styles and these actual skin fades, um, these actual detailed technical haircuts uh, that I believe no one else in town can do. Um, so that really is what set us apart. Uh, and that, that was what I counted on coming in. A, a new experience, a new look, some knowledge that we could offer our clients, um, better haircuts, better styles than they'd ever had before. Also, we created a brand. You guys see I got the clutch shirt on. So we sell shirts uh, often. So a lot of our clients wear shirts. Um, just, just a whole different experience, guys. If, like I said, though, if you want to do the $5 haircuts and do 40 a day, there's a, there's a spot for you. If you want to do a, a medium grade shop that does walk-ins and charges 12 bucks and you do this, that, and the other, you can do that. If you want to do an appointment only high end, if you want to do a studio, you guys can do this however you want. Just figure out why you're doing that and what you're going to do that's going to make you successful before you get into that. Uh, and then you guys can be successful. I do believe that. Number four guys is who is your staff going to be? Um, so you need to have an idea when you go in, if you have no idea and you say, I'm going to open up, a shop over here, it's gonna be this price. Uh, I'm gonna have three chairs and I'm gonna find barbers. Then what you need to do going in is understand, can you cover the bills by yourself without those barbers? Not having people guaranteed to be coming to your shop um, obviously is a risk. So say you set up the whole shop, you're ready to open and you don't have any barbers, then you need to be sure that you can pay those bills by yourself with the income that you're bringing in. So again, guys, I wouldn't recommend coming straight out of school and opening the shop because you're not gonna have clientele. The, the shop name's not gonna have any uh, ring to it. No, nobody's gonna know the name. So um, what I did was I went and worked for two years. I built my clientele, I made a name for myself. And when I opened the shop, my barbers coming in already had my name on them, um, that if they work for me, they must be doing what I'm doing. And of course they weren't as good coming out of school, but the goal was to put out what I was putting out. And that's what the shop was about, was I couldn't cut everybody's hair that wanted me, um, I needed more people that were working like me, that had the same goals as me and the same skills as me. Um, and so I knew I had three barbers that were gonna come in uh, that had kind of followed my lead and we were, we were working off of each other um, to put out the same product, the same experience. Um, and so for me, I knew I had those three guys. I knew that the three of them would cover the bills. I wouldn't have to pay rent uh, and then we could work up from there. So for you guys, if you don't have any barbers, you need to make sure you can pay the bills by yourself. If you know you got one guy, then you need to talk with him and say, hey, what I would do is say, hey, when we open this shop, are you cool with splitting? We'll split the bills straight up first off. I'm the owner, technically, eventually I don't wanna pay booth rent, but as now, as we're getting started, me and you are gonna split it. And once we get another guy, he'll cover the other half and you know, however you wanna go about it. But make sure you're set up for success um, with the staff that you have coming in. Make sure that you either set yourself up to cover it yourself because you don't have staff coming in or make sure that you have the right number of people and you know those people uh, and know that those numbers add up and we'll take care of the shop at the end of the day. All right, guys, my number five tip, and this is the most important, guys, and this goes with anything. This is my favorite part of being a barber, uh, but guys, use your resources at hand. Um, and so a good example, guys, you're opening your shop, you need all this construction work done, right? We, got, we have such a big clientele base as a barber. Um, you have somebody, I promise, that can help you with that or know somebody that can do that. So for me, guys, I had people in here helping us with the demolition. I had a client that came with a trailer that helped us haul stuff off to the dump. I had a client that helped with the plumbing. Um, I had a guy that does uh, home remodels. He was able to get paint for me at his cost. Um, you know, stuff like that, guys. So use your resources. And like I said, guys, these are my favorite people. I take care of my clients. Like they're very special to me. These are my close friends. Uh, and in return, when I need something from these guys that own their own business or uh, can help in any way, you know, they bring that back and reciprocate it. So uh, that's one of the most valuable parts. Um, you can't even put a price on that, guys, is being a barber and having these clients that have, you know, their, their business to offer to help you. Um, and so I, I definitely, to my clients, I go out of my way. If, if it's an emergency and they need one on my day off, I'm coming up here. Um, if it's late and they call me and they're like, hey man, I know you're closed and I have, I have to get a cut today. Can you get me in? I'm gonna get them in. And guys, what makes that so awesome is when I really need them, uh, they got me just like that. So guys, use your resources. Uh, we have such a broad spectrum of clients that do all kinds of things. So all aspects of opening the shop, uh, you should be able to get some help in some certain way. So guys, I got clients at Best Buy that help me get the TVs for my shop. I got clients at Menards that actually delivered my tool chest for me, really everywhere guys. So 
definitely use your resources and that's going to be throughout this whole time so even right now guys in the midst of this i'm using my resources and reaching out to uh, clients that work at the bank uh, that know finances um, to figure out ways to get these small business loans and, and figure out unemployment and all these things so guys use your resources use your clients that you know have them help you get set up for success in your shop and uh, you guys should have no problem anyways guys i hope this video helps um, guys, I followed all these tips. These are my best tips. And we have a nine chair barbershop now with the salon next door. Uh, and we're actually thinking about expanding. So I hope this helps guys. Good luck guys. If you're hoping to open your own barbershop, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out or leave a comment down below. If this was helpful guys, please leave me a thumbs up. Guys, it helps the channel grow so much. We're hitting 2,500 this week and I appreciate you guys so much. Guys, stay tuned. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. I'm still dropping content throughout all this. Turn on that bell notification. Guys, I want to do more live streams. And if you turn on the bell, it'll let you know when I go live and we can get on there and chop it up. So anyways, guys, stay tuned for some more content. And I'll catch you guys next time. If you guys aren't subscribed to my channel, make sure you click this link right here. If you want to check out some more content from me, check out this video right here. Appreciate it.